Welcome, my name is Thomas Sledford, and we're back here uh, for another Career Income Tax Preparation Training module dealing with question and answer section, sessions 7 through 9. And in this video, I'm going to go through the questions and the answers uh, to this content. That way, you will be able to get a better understanding of what it's all about. Uh, because basically, you got to remember if you're new to this industry, I'm just basically giving you an introduction to how to prepare basic income tax preparation. From there, the way you uh, do this is you keep learning, you keep learning, you keep learning. And that's what this is all about. Is the more you learn, the more money you can make, the more impact you can have on other people's lives when it comes to helping them with their income tax preparation matters uh, going forward. So the first question is, Cindy Peanut is 65 years of age. Does her standard deduction amount increase? Yes. For people 65 and older, their standard deduction amount increases. Uh, if they happen to be blind also, it increases even more. So uh, for people 65 and older, they automatically get an increase in their de the standard deduction amount. And if they're blind, that increases even more uh, compared to people under 65. Uh, the next one is Lisa Davis. She's 65 years of age and blind, so does her standard deduction amount increase more than Cindy's? Yes, it will. So she's 65 and blind, so her standard deduction amount will be much higher than just Cindy's, who just happened to be 65. Uh, the next question is, itemized deductions is based on what type of expenses? Itemized deductions is based on personal expenses that you may qualify for to deduct on your tax return using the Schedule A, which is an itemized deduction form. Uh, the biggest problem with itemized personal deductions is the average person that doesn't have enough of them to utilize them on the Schedule A form uh, compared to the standard deduction amount that's given by the IRS already based on filing status. So if you're a single person and your standard deduction is 6350 then your itemized deductions must be more than 6350 in order to benefit from that itemized deductions versus standard deduction. So that's how that works when it comes to using personal deductions opposed to standard deduction rates. Uh, the next question is, do you need to have taxable income to be able to itemize? No. As long as you have some type of income that you're going to be putting down on a tax return, you may still qualify for itemized deductions, which are personal expenses that goes on a schedule way that you may qualify for, like um, medicine and medical expenses, uh, real estate the taxes, mortgage interest, uh, contributions, volunteer work, uh, gambling losses, unreimbursed uh, expenses uh, when it comes to certain things you brought when it comes to your job that your job might not reimburse you for, you know, and but would do to the new tax reform going forward, uh, some of those deductions are no longer in play but they still apply to 2017 uh, and back when it comes to people who haven't filed a tax return for those years who may qualify for itemized deductions. Uh, the next question is, do you need to have, can you deduct child care expense on your tax return? If you have child care expenses, uh, it, it is deductible on a tax return, but child care expenses by itself, uh, no, you must have uh, some income to go along with that in order to deduct child care expenses on a tax return. So if you have income along with child care expenses, then you may be able to qualify to deduct them from your tax return based on uh, how much money you made for the year. You know, a lot of things when it comes to preparing these individual income tax returns is based on money. So the more money you made, the better chance you may have to write off certain deductions or qualify for certain expenses uh, based on money. And so if you made uh, very a little money, then if certain deductions or expenses you may have incurred that won't even matter because you didn't make enough money to support uh, writing off child care in the first place. So that's how that works when it comes to writing off any type of expense or deductions or having different type of credits that you may qualify for. They're all based on your overall income amount. Uh, when it comes to determining that. Uh, so going forward is, how many kids can you use to calculate your child care expense? Well, they only use two kids to calculate your child care expense, and they must be under 12. 
12 and under uh, is who qualify for child care expenses. So if you got kids that's already 13, when tax season show come around, then you can't write them off on child care at all. Because at that point, the government says they're old enough to watch themselves. <laughs> so we're not about to pay for someone to watch a 13 year old. So that's how that works. Um, the next one it says, education credit is for individuals going to college and receiving no financial assistance. That's true. Uh, so for people who uh, have children that's going off to college that they're paying for and they don't receive any scholarships or grants because the income for the parent is too high where they don't qualify for outside assistance at all, then that's who the education credit was meant for. And so if the parent has college age students who they're paying to go to college for who don't receive any financial assistance from the government or anywhere else because of the income of the parents is too high, then whatever money they spend out of pocket, uh, they can write off a certain percentage of that because when it comes to calculating the deduction or the credit for uh, education credit, the amount that the government uses is 4000 So anything over 4000 uh is just what it is. Uh, the government is not going to let you utilize your total expenses when it comes to calculating the education credit. So if you pay 10000 to send your kids to school for a, for a year, you're only going to get to use 4000 that to calculate the return. So that's how it works. So uh, the child tax credit for kids 16 and under, yes. So for child tax credit, kids got to be 16 and under in order to benefit from that. So if you say, for instance, you owe $3,000 uh, on your return and you got two kids under 16, uh, you may qualify to uh, write off another 2,000 child tax credit, which will reduce it uh, and make that 3,000 even lower and if you have any other deductions that you qualify for somewhere else on the tax return, it may wipe out your taxes altogether based on your overall situation. So that's how that works. Uh, also, the child tax credit increased this year. Yes, this year, upcoming season, the child tax credit is worth 2000 per child opposed to one. So that's the big difference going forward. How much is the child tax credit for a kid 16 and under for 2017 is 1000 $1,000 per child that's 16 and under. So if you got five kids under uh, under 16, then that's $5,000 in child tax credit that you may be able to utilize if you owe 5000 or more in uh, taxes on the money that you made. That's how it works. How much is the child tax credit for upcoming season for each kid, which is 2000 I mentioned so the child tax the child tax credit has increased to 2000 per child for this upcoming tax season. Form 8880 is a form for individuals who made a contribution to their retirement account. True, so if you get your W-2s from the client and you see in box 12 that they made a contribution towards their retirement account and they uh, filed a certain filing status and they made under a certain dollar amount, they may qualify for the uh, a, a, a savings on that contribution, which will be calculated on the tax return which generates no more than $200 uh, going forward. So that's how that works. And the next one is residential energy credit is used mostly by homeowners. Yes, this is mainly for people who have homes who've uh, paid for uh, brand new energy saving doors and windows and things of that nature to make the home more energy sufficient. Uh, it's the, what that's about. And generally, you get no more than five hundred dollar deduction for that, no matter how much you spend. That's how that works. So, as does box twelve of the W two deal with retirement savings contribution credit? Yes, it does. So, if you see a contribution in box twelve, for the most part, it's going to have an amount. It's going to have a letter associated with it, which is going to tell you what it uh, applies to. And if it's a D or E, a lot of times that's dealing with a contribution made to their 401 account. Um, the next one says, people normally receive tip income will have box seven and eight of their W-2 with a dollar amount. Yes, you should, based on who you're working for and what type of employer they are. If they in line with the payroll standards and the tip income and how that works, they should have a, uh, they should have income in both boxes of seven and eight 
for the people who work in the tip industry. All clients are required to have health insurance for themselves and their children, which is true, but going forward, uh, they say they're not penalizing you for not having it. Uh, that's yet to be seen. Uh, next one is Form 5329 is additional tax on IRA. Yeah, so for people who receive uh, money from their retirement account, either by borrowing some money from their 401k or no longer working a job but had uh, retirement money up there and they pulled it down, if they were 59, if they were younger than 59 and a half at that time, they will be penalized additional 10% on that money and when it's time to file it during tax season. It says individual retirement accounts can receive additional tax on money that is deductible for age 59 and a half. Yeah, I just said that. Uh, form 4137 is a form prepared for individuals receiving tip income. Yes. So for most part, for people who receive a tip income, they're going to have box seven and eight filled in with some type of dollar amount. And the way you calculate those type of returns are done a little bit different than how you would do a person who doesn't have tip income. And so I'll go through that in a, another video on how to calculate uh, a tax return when it comes to a person who have tip income that's uh, showing on AW2 opposed to a person who doesn't. Next question is true or false. Form 8863 can be claimed by a person who is 22 years old and a full-time college student. Yes. So that's who that was meant for. Uh, on top of that, if that person is paying their own education, tuition, and fees out of their own pocket and not receiving any money from parents or the government at all, and they totally uh, supporting their own college education, then yes, they can deduct it from their tax return uh, based on overall income that they made, which is going to make a difference uh, in that situation. Self-employed tax is prepared when a client has net profit from a business, true or false, true. So that's how self-employment tax is calculated. So for people who have a small business or self-employed who has a net profit from their business, that's when you calculate self-employment tax. For people who didn't make a profit, who had a loss going on, then there's no tax to calculate. And then it says all written content will provide video explanations and resources, material mentioned to assist you with finding what you need fast. So everything concerning this course is going to have enough information in it that's going to allow you to successfully prepare this course and be able to successfully prepare basic individual income taxes with confidence if you take action and truly learn it this information for yourself to be uh, a full-fledged, knowledgeable income tax uh, preparer. It will help you do that. See you in the next video.